When should you throw out a power saw? And by that, I mean, when should you finally say, it's no longer safe or effective to work with this thing anymore. I'm getting rid of it. My table saw has a really serious defect in it, something that I've been combating for years, and I'm finally ready to pull the plug on it. Likewise, I have a circular saw that got badly damaged a while back, and I'm retiring it too. Today, I'm explaining why I'm getting rid of these saws and what it is that drives carpenters to make these decisions. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So the decision to finally throw out a power saw isn't an easy one. These things are expensive and you're going to have to replace it with something new that may have quirks and issues that you don't foresee. Furthermore, people have surprisingly intense opinions about this subject. There's a strong camp of people who say you never throw away a tool. You fix it or just hold on to it. I have woodworker friends who are like this, but others like job site carpenters may toss a saw the moment it has an issue. They've got too much work to do and they can't have a saw slowing them down or messing up cuts. I'm somewhere in the middle in that I will repair things to a certain point. But when certain red lines get crossed, they're gone. So what drove me to give up on these two? We'll start with the table saw. This thing saw a lot of job site use, and somewhere along the way, it developed a blade alignment issue. The blade and arbor mount got slightly twisted. The back of the blade is farther away from the fence than the front. Now, strangely, you can still cut with a saw like this. Because the blade opens at the back, it doesn't pinch the stock as it passes through, which would cause a serious binding issue. Instead, the blade curve sort of draws the stock away from the fence as it exits, just a tiny bit. So I can still get a full, accurate rip this way. Because the stock is pinned to the fence at the front, where the cut is initiated, and the kerf rides the blade the rest of the way out. But the problem is, this effect gets compounded when I bevel the blade. That misalignment amplifies when I lay the blade over, and it gets worse with every degree. If I bevel rip like this, my stock veers wildly away from the fence. On a full pass, my piece gets crazy flared and wangled. That's unacceptable. It's dangerous and weird and just inaccurate. I only get a small board section that's properly ripped and I can't trust that. Now, I'm sure people out there are screaming, but you can adjust that and they're right. Normally you can. My old DeWalt 744 has a mount where you can swing the blade assembly slightly by loosening these bolts and pulling the thing sideways. I've done this with some extreme pressure and tool leverage, but no matter how much I crank it over and tighten, eventually it just walks itself back. Something in there just got bent on the job site one day, and I think I actually made it worse when I was doing the table saw mistakes video recently. I was intentionally trying to bind the blade for that video, doing all sorts of terrible things to the saw, knowing that it was at the end of its life. I even took the riving knife off, which you really shouldn't do, and twisted the heck out of the blade. Incredibly, it wouldn't kick. I think my blade was too sharp, but my saw is like crazy jack now, worse than before, and so I'm looking for a new one. I'll still do straight rips on this one carefully until I find a replacement, but a change out is long overdue. As for my circular saw, I was working in here one day and I had it sitting on the edge of my work table, which you should be wary of. I caught my tool belt on it and pulled the thing right off the table. It hit the hard concrete and bam, the blade guard got pranged. Part of it actually snapped and the whole thing definitely got skewed because now the swing guard gets stuck in the upper housing. It won't snap back after it passes a certain degree. I've tried wrenching and prying it, but it just jams on its own and I can't get it to stop. That's a red liner for me. The blade guard has to work. I've seen saws run away before and it's scary. Some people think it's okay to pin them. I 100% disagree. Eventually you will pay for doing that. Now I've had other circular saw issues that I just dealt with. For instance, some of my older ones would cut a slight bevel because the blade would get knocked out of perpendicular with the sole plate. Many sidewinders have this issue because the weight of the motor pulls it down over time. But I used to manually reset this by putting the plate flat on a piece of lumber, stepping on it, and pulling up the motor housing until the blade plumbed out. That actually worked. And I've squared them front to back with similar methods when they get knocked out of line after drops. I could handle all that and get the saw cutting to pretty fine tolerances again. But the blade guard getting stuck and not lowering? Nope, that's the end of the road. I won't use it much anymore and I won't let anyone else use it. I've been lucky that my miter saws over the years have been perfect workhorses. Other than squaring blades up and such through normal user manual tweaks, they've been almost flawless. And really, both of these tools have been great. They only started to malfunction because I screwed them up. Otherwise, they're awesome saws. But with newer compounding flaws, I have to move on from them. Obviously, I've now got my Makita Magnesium, which is great, and my Skill Worm Drive, which is a beast. So I'm set for circular saws. 
But for table saws, I'll be getting something new next year, and I'll probably cover why I pick what I pick in another video. But enough about me, what about you? When do you decide to throw out a saw, and why do you do it? This is largely a subjective issue. I want to hear people's thoughts and opinions and your experiences of how you dealt with defective saws. Put it down in the comments. I think we can all learn something from it. That's it for this week, though. As always, thanks for watching, and be sure to check back soon for more videos coming up. And please consider subscribing and hitting that bell button to turn on notifications. That way, you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with The Honest Carpenter. I'll see you next time.